Kate, how are you doing? I'm good. Happy Friday. It's, it's been hot here in New York, but we're going through it. How about you? Where is your location? Oh, I'm currently in Texas. I, I know all about the heat. It's been it's been wildly hot outside. But um, yeah, I'm out here in Texas um, with a group called the NYABC. So the Not Your Average Baseball Camp. And um, it's just a group of content creators who have a passion for baseball and have a passion for growing the game of baseball and youth sports. And we have a, we're on a mission to be like the most influential voices in youth baseball. And uh, yeah, we just we just got hosted or we hosted a baseball camp sponsored by Warstick. And uh, they we essentially had like, I think, 300 athletes apply for this camp and or not 300, 3000 athletes what? apply for this camp. And yeah, and we raffled off 50 tickets and uh, all those athletes uh, were able to attend this camp for free. So, yeah, it was a pretty exciting time. We're out at University of Arlington in Texas and uh, got to spend a couple of days with them and then got to hang out with all those creators for the last couple of days. That's awesome. Wait, what are the ages of the athletes or is it just the creators there? You said 50 um, oh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So, so 50 athletes um, between the ages of 10 and 14. Oh so, my gosh. That's yeah, that's, bad. that's, oh, it's so fun. It's like the perfect age for development of skill and character. So we're, we're really big on character development and teaching these kids about um, how it's barely about baseball and it's, it's mostly about like developing life skills, but we also have like some of the best creators in the world who have some of the best information in the world. So it's, it's a really cool dynamic. That's awesome. And it was for this whole week or just a couple of days. Yeah, so the campers were there uh, Monday and Tuesday, and then we we've been filming content for the last couple of days. So we got out, we put out some really good stuff, and had a ton of different um, collaborations that are coming out in the future. I know, I'm, ex I'm excited to see. I got sneak previews to you learning some like banana ball party animals tricks. So I'm excited to see all your tricks. <laughs> <out. laughs> yeah, there, there's a there's a couple ones that we tried that didn't make the cut. <laughs> They were a little bit rough, but yeah, we were, uh, I was learning some stuff from one of the bananas guys, Tanner Thomas is the man. That guy's awesome. Every time we get to meet up, he's, he's always, uh, putting out a ton of smiles and making us all laugh. So yeah, everyone's awesome. We're all like, we all come from different backgrounds. We all have different skill sets. We, we really are like a, um, a really good team, like similar to the Avengers, I would say, but yeah, it's, similar it's to really the Avengers. Cool. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think I'm. Yeah, I don't know where I'm at on the Avenger. I don't know which Avenger I am, but um, yeah, I'm just happy to be a part of that group. They're they're great people. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, let's get into some baseball stuff for the week. A lot of top stories. One of the biggest ones was robot umps are possibly arriving in MLB. They sent a memo out to all 30 teams Tuesday that said how they're going to view the future of like automated balls and strike system. And beginning June 25th, all AAA games will move to a challenge challenge system. Since the start of the 2023 season, a fully automated strike zone was also being tested at that level. I don't really know how I feel about this. I know we, we were talking about it a little before the show. Do you think this will ever get into the big leagues? Like, do you see this as the future for baseball? See, I like three years ago, I kind of compared this concept to flying cars <laughs> like oh man that could never happen this is this is insane but as we get more advanced technologically i feel like it is inevitable that we get to this point but um it's it's unfortunate for me i i'm i'm a big like old school guy and i i really love um being able to have a super villain behind the plate that i can blame for my problems so yeah. i feel like I feel like having a fully automated system would just take away some of the culture of the game. But um, having this challenge system is interesting because, I mean, you see it done in football. You see all these um, all these challenges, but they, they put like a limit to the number of challenges. I think that's what they're planning on implementing. I believe that's what I read was uh, they're going to limit it to two or three challenges per team. And um, that to me seems smart. I feel like if you are going to do it, you don't want to have a huge um, time delay. We've already done so many things in the game to reduce the number of time that I, or that fans are sitting in the stands. So, um, yeah, I, I think it is inevitable, and I'm not sure if it's going to be a good system if they can't figure out like the height difference for um, every single player. That seems so tedious having to go like measure yourself before every game. But um, yeah, it's crazy what's going on. 
Yeah, especially you make a good point. And I feel like when a lot of hitters are changing their mechanics or trying to make adjustments, like shortening their stance or like having a wider stance, so then they're going to have to remeasure them again. Like you can't even just take their measurements at the start of the season. It would have to be pretty much every single game to determine Yeah, and exactly, 100%. And I think, um, I think that's what the uh, Manfred was saying. He was saying that it's just not ready for the 2025 season because of that dilemma. And I think they're, they're trying to sort that one out. So I think they have East, West, but North and South is still – um, up in the air and they're trying to figure out a solution for it. Hopefully it, it takes them like 10 years. So we don't have to yeah. deal with it for a long time. I don't really want it. Cause I feel like, especially with a lot of the minor league guys say it's such a flawed system as we were talking about, but I wouldn't mind like two challenges a game. I feel like that could be, there's been a lot of games that ended on a really bad call. So maybe mm. you can challenge that, you know, bottom of the ninth inning called strike three or it's a ball or whatever. That could be kind of cool, but. I think yeah, it's too I st- yeah. I, to be honest, though, I I kind of like having that super villain. I I want yeah. that guy to blame because I've thrown a very many strikes that should have been balls, and I really appreciated that. And then um, I liked watching all the other teams um, get super mad and angry and and blame the umpire for how I was able to strike him out looking. So I, I see both ends of the spectrum, but. I don't know when you take out the human factor, it just kind of diminishes the quality of the game. I feel like, but I agree. I know. I understand that. I, I used to be someone that was like, this will never happen, but now like, we're here. It's going to be five years later and they're going to be implementing it. Yep. Um, I have to say I've been sobbing over social media this entire week, seeing all of the college players, like take the dirt from Omaha when they're getting eliminated. But Jack mm. Caglione, one of the greatest college players ever, said that obviously they had to say goodbye. Florida was eliminated. I dread the day that I had to take this jersey off for the last time, and I guess it's tonight. And I guess, you know, mentally I just wasn't ready for it, but that's just kind of how life goes. This guy finished the season hitting 419 with 35 home runs and 72 RBIs. Like, just one of the greatest college players ever that I've – had the experience of watching yeah uh, it's it's so sad to see um to see moments like that happen and it's definitely it's been a moment that's happened multiple times in my career and i've had to um fight through someone else telling me no but me not being ready to say no so i'm hoping that that might be the case where where there's just that inner beast that just does not take no for an answer and he just grinds out the next chapter but um yeah it's it's very sad to see i've had to see it in my own life and i've had to see it in a number of teammates life like um my junior year of college was like my first wake-up call in and reality check when uh when we got to the postseason and we lost uh, i believe it was in the the first round of playoffs and a lot of these seniors um like super seniors back then were were just like bawling their eyes out and i was over here just like Lord at all, like, why are you guys sad? I'm not done playing yep. baseball. But then I, I realized, like, oh wow, they are, and they're never going to play again. And and there's no, there's no chance that they're ever going to play again. And then I'm like, we're all going to be there, every single one of us. And ever since I experienced that, I, that's one of the main things that I tell my athletes. It's like, hey, if you think that you're going to be in the game forever, you're crazy. Listen to this. Uh, listen to this thought. Um, every athlete has a parent and every parent has the desire to be a CEO of their company. And, um, it takes about 30 to 40 years to become that CEO of their company. Well, baseball, we are supposed to be the CEOs of our company by the time we're 18 and we have to be at this elite level, uh, at such a young age. And if we don't ever get there, then, um, the preparation and opportunity don't match the time. And, um, it, it just passes us by. So, we all get to that point and not all of us develop at the right time and we don't all get the right opportunities. So it does happen to all of us. And even the guys that are the best of the best are, they're all like 35, 36 and, yeah. and they're having to start a new chapter. So yeah, it, we all get there and, and it's so sad to see because we put so much into this game, but man, um, it, it's, you never want to see a guy go through it, but you know, it is inevitable for all of us. I could, that was so beautifully said. I completely agree. It sucks too. And I feel like even if you are the best of the best on the top of your game, if you're like two years, not in the time frame, you know, like 20, 21 years old, they're like, Oh, well, sorry, you're too old. Like imagine being told you're too old at like 22 years old. 
to pursue what you want to pursue. Kate, I don't have to imagine that. That happened like 10 <laughs> times for me. <laughs> I've been too old my whole life. <laughs> Every stage of my life, I've been way too old. It's crazy. <laughs> I commend I commend the athletes. I really, really do. But Bobby's our pitching expert. I want to get your thoughts on this. I'm going to just set the scene for Bobby here. Because Yankees, Orioles, it looks like a brand new rivalry is brewing in sports. So... They started the series on, when, no, Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, Aaron Judge gets hit in the hand, his second at bat. Everyone thinks it's, in, it's intentional, right? Judge is, like, trying to approach the mound. He ends up just going to first base. Second at bat, Glaber gets hit following the game. Yankees Twitter is already up in arms saying that they think it was intentional. And then the next day, the Yankees hit Gunner and they hit Colton Kowser. Mm. I just... I'm curious to hear your thoughts on as a pitcher and when you were growing up and throwing in the games, like if that's something that is decided, if they're actually going to hit a player or not. Mm. Well, I'm not going to speak to my personal experience because I don't want to throw anyone <laughs> under the bus, but um, there, there are moments in the game where it self-regulates. And if there's something that's done that breaks the unwritten rules, then the game like gets retaliation. So that's 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 a very real concept. And whether it's a superstition that, that where someone like like falls and injures themselves, or or someone gets hit, or a ball just kind of runs a little too far inside and hits someone in the back, like that it just happens. And um, and it's kind of one of those things where if you knew it was supposed to happen, you you don't say anything about it, and you're like, okay, tip a cap, touche. But if uh, if it really hurts or yeah. if uh, or if you feel like it was unjust like fights happen and and that's a very real part of the game it's a part of the game i never got to contribute to i never actually been in a fight um i attempted to fight people a number of times by <laughs> by throwing really high inside and accidentally hitting someone in the back a couple times more than a couple times but uh yeah no one ever charged the mound but for me, like, man, if you're, if you're going after Aaron judge, like that's crazy. Like dude's like an amazing human being. He's awesome. And, um, and he's massive. <laughs> like I would not yeah. want Aaron judge running after me, but, um, uh, but yeah, like heat of the moment. I mean, so many things like even out here in Texas, I, I, I take living in California for granted. Like it is so humid out here. And I, I forget what it feels like with my like holding and gripping seams without, like without any foreign substance, like it is so easy for a ball to get away from you. So yeah. I, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but um, man, if it was that you couldn't have picked a worse guy. Aaron Judge is such a good human being. <laughs> well, so here's the thing that I actually do want to ask you. I just thought of a follow up. So the Yankees came out after the game and they said, yeah, we were definitely pit pissed about it. We don't like being pitched too high and in as a pitcher. Is that frustrating to hear like someone say, well, we just don't want to be pitched up and in? No, I, I love it like because that just tells me what right. I should do. <laughs> yeah. I, if, if they say, I don't, we don't like being pitched up and in, I'm going to throw up and in 10 times out of 10 because that just, that gives me a competitive edge. Like this is a competitive game and um, it's, it's very much like, like a gladiator scene. Like you have to, you have to like win, otherwise they're stealing your job. So any any time that you lose your poker face and let something like that slip, like man, like you better expect to get that exposed in, later in the series. Uh, but on the opposite end of that spectrum, like if you if you do something that the team feels like it's unjust, there is going to be a retaliation, and that's to be expected. So um, I feel like if if the Yankees felt like it was unjust, then maybe the hitting Aaron judge wasn't intentional, but it's pretty safe to say that there was probably at least some, um, intent to throw up and in maybe not hit guys, but, um, you definitely want to brush them off the plate to let them know like, Hey, we're not going to let that happen to our teammates. Cause at the end of the day, it's your gladiator team versus our gladiator team. And the, the best team is going to win. So yeah, you kind of have to like get your teammates backs and, um, and pick them up, even if they didn't do anything to you. Like if, for me, like if I had a, um, someone slide in and cleat my shortstop, you best know that I'm taking down notes on what that guy's number is. And, and I'm going to throw up and in, and I'm going to at least put him on his back. Cause, uh, at the end of the day, my shortstop is with me all year round. And no matter how nice of a person I am, that person 
almost took out my my starting shortstop and ended his career. So um, I'm going to make him at least get dirty for it. 100%. 100%. I also think it's, they were talking about this on the broadcast, like how different it is now because like if a pitcher hits a guy, they might just toss him from the game. And I feel like mm. years past that never used to happen. Like they would let fights ensue. They would let batters get hit. But I mean, it's, it's better because you're protecting the players. But I think the pitchers are nervous to even get close to intentionally throwing at a batter. I know someone who is not nervous about intentionally throwing at batters. Aaron, um, <laughs> I was going to say Aaron Judge. I uh, <laughs> Joe, Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly does not care at all. That guy is the psychopath of all psychopaths, and I love every bit of that energy. Where's Aaron Judge is probably the opposite end of that spectrum, but <laughs> yeah. Wait, that's I freaking love Joe Kelly. That's so awesome. And if you meet him in person, like he he's one of the athletes that um, goes to the facility that I train at, so um, I get to talk to him all the time, and um, he's just a great human being. But he is there is something about him that's a little bit crazy and. Uh, his personification of being a psychopath, probably true, but that's, that's once he steps on the, on the diamond, but when he's, when he's off the diamond, he's such a family guy and really good person uh, for youth baseball and, and such a cool guy. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love that story. Um, <laughs> but Royce Lewis just continues to hit home runs. I'm telling you, if this man can stay healthy, top 10 player in baseball, I'm so excited to watch him. He had an interesting post game interview though came out to the media and said, I don't, like I told my hitting coach, I don't really believe in slumps. Like, and I think that's why he's so effective and so good at the plate because he's so co confident. He doesn't even let that thought get into his head. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. So um, I'm not, I'm not a hitter, but I do have the pitching version of slumps. And I think yeah. what I've learned even this week, I, I learned this this week because a big part of what we learned at the camp is like how to handle adversity and how to um, how to get through situations like that. So one of the creators that was here, his name's uh, Dr. Hitting. He has this thing for youth athletes. It says uh, he says uh, you got to have a big dog mentality, and you don't want to be a kitty cat, like because he's talking to ten year olds. But um, the the big dog mentality is such a, a powerful tool, and that's something that I've seen so many big leaguers just they they know how to brush stuff off their shoulder because they have that big dog mentality they're they're going to be a competitor and they're going to not let something phase them um i think part of having a big dog mentality is having so many reps of doing it right under your belt that the bad reps don't even matter anymore but um but yeah like he's um you got to kind of stay in the present you can't you can't focus too much on the past you can't you can't look too far ahead into the future you just have to just live in the present and get after it Hundred percent, hundred percent. Hashtag war some... stick. Hashtag <laughs> war like, stick. I love that little that's, plug. That's their thing. <laughs> I'm gonna use that. Uh, we can get some viral clips, viral videos for the week. Jeter asked Barry Bonds what he would do against Satchel Page, and his response is exactly what you would expect. We're just gonna watch it on our own right now. Freaking awesome. Gone. <clears throat> like, honestly, Barry Bonds probably would take Satchel Page deep, though. <laughs> Dude, even if he wouldn't, though, like, that that mentality is the big dog mentality. That's why DR is, like, such a smart individual because that's what all the elites are doing. They're, they have that mentality. Like, I will take you deep. I don't care who you are, what you throw. I'm going to take you deep. And that's that. That's what it takes, honestly. Like I, I didn't throw ninety five until the very tail end of my career, but I, I had been throwing ninety five since I, I was in high school. Like you have to have that mentality, and 100%. if you don't have a ninety five mentality, then you probably look like you throw eighty five, and you're gonna get crushed. So, yeah. yeah, I love that. Barry Bonds is the goat for that. He's the best. Also, like that's that is what I would expect him to say. Like, there's nothing else I thought he would have said differently. 100%. And and the fact that Jeter was asking him it that was that was pretty cool. I I just think like a couple legends like sharing a cup of coffee just talking about that. That's so cool. Yeah. I know. I the broadcast it was like A-Rod, Bonds, David Ortiz, Derek Jeter. I'm like, let's just like count all the home runs and all these guys' careers. <laughs> what an elite broadcast. 
They had Reggie right. Jackson on. He was great. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I would just want to sit in a room and just talk to those guys about what they see from a pitcher or from a hitter's perspective. Like what are the things that they see um, off of our fingertips? Because the, I like when I've been in their shoes and I've had to hit against the elite pitching, like it's the scariest thing in the world and they make it look so easy. And I know that it has to do with reps, but part of it just comes down to just being a freak. And, and all yeah. of those guys that I was watching in that clip are just freaks. I know they're awesome. Um, anytime Imanaga says anything to the media, I'm like always very excited. So I haven't watched this yet, but this was what his mindset was during the bottom of the seventh inning. I was pretty hungry and I was thinking about what I was going to eat. Have you, what are your, were your thoughts, Bobby, when you were pitching? Oh man. You were right. dialed so, in. I had my little rituals. Like I had this like towel, like I, I really just tried not to focus on the situation. So I had this like towel thing that I would wrap around my arm. And, um, it was like a Gatorade towel it was really long. And I would just like kind of wrap my shoulder in it. And then I'll just like be constantly adjusting it. I never liked just sitting still. Um, but, but yeah, like that, that hungry thought always popped into my head. It's like, oh man, I could really go for like a stadium hot dog right now, or I could, <laughs> I could go for like a protein bar and I would like hit up my my trainers like, hey, any chance we could get something in the in the dugout right now? And and they were just like, no, you know the rules. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> but like I was constantly asking. It, it's very true because baseball is so long. Everyone thinks like, oh, game starts at seven. Like athletes probably get there at like five. But man, we're there at like noon, and like there is a spread. And and the higher up you go, the better the spread gets. And so I'm kind of speaking from a a low end of the totem pole, like peanut butter and jelly sandwich with soggy bread, like uh, totem pole, but some some stadiums other ones were good but there there were definitely a lot of soggy sandwiches but um yeah i think i think you just like get so hungry and and you want to focus on the game but you just like can't because your stomach's like screaming louder than the audience so i i resonated with that like he's so calm that he's just like (laughs) talking about food um that's the same as like someone like being in the middle of a pressure situation in a postseason game and just blowing a bubble mid-pitch I love I love that relaxed um, aspect of these high elite athletes. Yeah, no, he's the best. Leading in Cy Young voting, like I'm I'm so excited for him. Um, this probably I made a video about this about Tristan Casas being interviewed on Father's Day and dropping a wild story about his dad getting arrested. I don't. If anyone didn't watch Sunday Night Baseball, that was probably the wildest game and broadcast I've ever watched. But we can. We can watch it down on what Tristan said to the media. Bobby, this man, I'm not kidding. He did not stop talking the entire time they ha- they gave him the microphone. Like, just nonstop. We, we were joking and saying, like, this was Tristan's interview to be a broadcaster after he's done playing baseball. It was the funniest thing in the world. Yeah, he he absolutely, like, framed that story so well, too. And <laughs> and it was super inspirational, too. Like, um, I know he, he probably wasn't trying to do this, but, man, like – he probably reached so many athletes with that story. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, what's your take on the the whole story? I loved it. I 
honestly, he was talking so fast. I and I didn't really know where he was going with the story, but it was like a very valuable lesson for kids. You know what I mean? And like not sulking, not pouting, like in the middle of the game. So if people were to absorb that, like that's a crucial story, especially when you're like six, seven years old and you probably never made that mistake again. Yeah, I think um, I think he um, <laughs> the fact that uh, his dad got arrested. I, I definitely resonated with that. Like um, my dad never got arrested, but uh, just like how. Um, how everything uh, plays out with your parents. Like you're always trying to learn, learn a lesson from like some of the good things and the bad things that take place. But he, um, um, he kind of pointed out like some parents like kind of take things a little too far, but that doesn't mean you don't love them. Like everyone makes mistakes and everything. But um, the fact that he was able to like look to like the message that his dad was trying to put on display there and he was able to learn from it and become a better person. Like that just shows you like, um, how his dad did a great job in all the other aspects and and just raised him to be a great human being. So um, that's that's super cool. Like obviously parents like don't, don't get arrested and like scream and like do like the the throw your Looney t or the Looney Tunes throw your kid back out onto the field. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I think um, I think learning how to um, kind of adopt some of the mindset stuff that we're learning here with the NYABC guys like man, it's barely about baseball. It's all about character development. And if, if you treat the, the influential years of your child's life, um, with respect and, and with tender, loving care, like you're, uh, you're going to produce a really good human being. So yeah. Um, keep the game fun, keep it, keep it, uh, focused on, on fun and character and, and skill development and, and don't make it all about trophies and you're going to have a winning formula. hundred percent, hundred percent. I think we're almost at time. Do you have any last, like best thing that you learned at the camp this week or best thing that you taught the youth at the camp this week? Yeah, I mean, I was I was very much so like talking about arm path and talking about how to have efficient mechanics. And um, I think it's, it's really fun and entertaining. But um, man, I, I'd say like <clears throat> the most important thing I learned is just um, understanding like from a coach's perspective, if you if you're going in, uh, to a camp expecting just to like share a ton of information and, and you're, you're going in like thinking like, Oh man, like I'm going to like make these kids lives better. It's, that's like the opposite of how I feel right now. I feel like I, I barely taught them anything and they taught me so much because, um, like the way they're responding, the way they're working hard, the way they like emotionally responded just to us being there. Like, it was so cool. Like half of these guys were like in tears when they had to leave because, um, they watch all of our content every single day. So it's like a glimpse into the, like who my followers are. Um, yeah. Like these kids literally invest six or seven days a week into watching my content. And they spend hours and hours and hours on their phone, like trying to, trying to learn from one or two things that I teach them. And like every single athlete, when I would mention something, they're like, Oh, I saw that in this video. I saw that in this video. And, and, um, and they're so invested. It, it just kind of humbles me and makes me remember like, man, there's a person on the other end of that screen that I'm making my content for. And, and, um, I have a responsibility to, to showcase like, not just with the knowledge, but the beliefs that I have too. And, uh, it just, it's kind of inspired me to want to be, uh, better at like sharing my faith with them. And, um, I had a couple of cool opportunities to share my faith and kind of encourage athletes to open up their Bible. We had this one kid, his name's Luke. If you're watching this, Luke, shout out to you, but um, yeah, he had, he had never read the book of Luke before. And I'm like, bro, you got the name Luke in your name and you don't read that. Like, what are you doing? So very next day he's like, Hey, guess what? I read the, the first chapter of Luke and, and I really like it. I'm going to read the rest of it when I get home. And like that to me, it's like, dude, that was a shaping moment. That was a, um, like God planted a seed right there. And that was so yeah. cool. And, and to have like that, that platform, um, where these kids are just fired up to be there. And then you drop a, a God bomb on them without them knowing. And, um, like I didn't plan on doing that. That was definitely a Holy spirit thing, but like, yeah. it's cool seeing like, uh, God use something like that for his glory. That's awesome. I love that. Oh yep. my God. Definitely made those kids days too. And like being able to share that on top of baseball, I feel like just makes everything worth it. You know what I mean? That it makes all of my past experiences, the good, the bad, um, the, the tough times, it makes all of it worth it because I get to share from my experiences. I think that's, to me, that's what like is the selling point for, 
for my faith is like, man, it's not perfect. I'm not, <laughs> I still struggle. I still have to go home and uh, get my AC repaired and uh, with the hundred degree heat. And uh, it's not like I live this glamorous life or anything, but, um, but man, like the peace and hope that, that comes from all the experiences that I've had and how God's like worked through me is, is so cool. <clears throat> I love that. Yeah. I think we should end on that. That was perfect. <laughs> you, so you don't want it. You don't have your corner. My corner. What am I working on today? I'm working on more baseball slang for the girlies. I literally watched a couple games this past week and then just watched, like wrote down everything that the broadcast said. And I'm going to be making a couple videos on that because there are a lot of things that they say on the broadcast and they were like, wow, that would just go right over someone's head. And I actually experienced that last week when I went to a cricket match and I had no idea what's going on. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is how people are about baseball. So this is why I'm teaching them. <laughs> but it was good. So I'll be doing that. I'm going to make some videos on, I've been really interested in making videos on like the athletes that they're not showing on ESPN. Cause I feel like they're just cycling the, th the three, like, you know, judge Shohei Mookie, like constantly. So I'm trying to, find some of the other athletes that are doing really well that are like underrated and slept on a little bit. So be making some videos on that as well. That's yeah. cool. The unspoken warrior. I love it. The unspoken warrior. Yeah. Give me that. Stephen Kwan. If I can't stop talking about Stephen Kwan on my page, <laughs> he's probably like stop with the media attention. I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> you got to yeah. love it though. I've, I'm, I'm always trying to find obscure stuff to talk about. And um, it's easy to go for the viral clips. I, I understand why they do it. Cause they got to get, x million views um but yeah. um man i feel like the the unspoken warrior um is sometimes a better story than the guy who's in the highlights 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah awesome kate well hey thanks for thanks for making the adjustment on the time and uh, appreciate you uh accommodating oh my gosh of course we missed ian and we'll back we'll be back next week so all's well he didn't leave the show <laughs> <laughs> all right bye all right, see ya.